The subject matter is part of research that I have been doing uh, for the past four years based in Rome at the Gregorian University on children's rights in canon law. That's the canon law of the Catholic Church, the Latin, what's called the Latin Catholic Church. And part of that has been to look at this relationship between canon law, the law of the Catholic Church, and um, how that has been impacted, if at all, by the fact that the uh, Holy See, which legislates for the entire Catholic Church and which signed the convention, looking at what way does that, in does that intersect? How does it work that the Holy See signs, to an, signs an international treaty on children's rights? Does that have any effect? on canon law, and if it does, how does it have that? And if it doesn't, why doesn't it? There are no books on this subject, really. Um, it's not an area that has been of interest to canon lawyers, or civil lawyers for that matter, um, mainly because you really do need to be coming from both a civil law background and a canon law background. So there hasn't been that interest there, and yet I think it's a fascinating subject. I think as we move forward, uh, it's going to become more and more relevant and more and more important. So I'm hoping that my work will be a baseline, if you like, that other people will pick out areas that I haven't had the time to do anything more than just point to them. And I'm hoping they'll probe them, they'll open them, they'll interrogate them. And I hope that'll be the legacy of it, that it'll open up children's rights and canon law to a generation of canon law scholars. The stuff that I have spent the last four years researching, looking at, distilling, analysing, um, that that will now be put out to, let's say, a secular audience, essentially, at least an audience that isn't up to speed in the way that um, I have become on this. So to throw it out there and to see how people respond to it, I think will help me, uh, particularly now as I come towards the end of my doctoral studies and put this, um, put this thesis to bed, finally. Well, I have such respect for the RIA and its insistence on grounded scholarship that when I was asked, the first thing was I knew I had to say yes to it, um, that I couldn't say no, and uh, because I have such respect. But I also felt deeply challenged because I knew I was going to have to um, reach the bar of scholarship that they set. So that's the challenge. I think that one of those things that um, when you become a member of the RIA, there is a, a part of you that says, you know, yippee, a part of you that says, isn't this wonderful, um, that there's a sense of arrival or docking, perhaps, after a career, um, a long career in academic life. Um, there's a sense of uh, being called home. Uh, becoming part of the academy and I love that. Um, I have to say I, um, when I was given that honour, um, a great sense of, just a great sense of personal, personal um, contentment. But going backwards is quite simply not an option. Gurmila Mahikov.